Um, welcome to Introduction to Principles of Epidemiology. I'm Dr. Muhammad Razif and uh, we will be learning about what is epidemiology and uh, we will learn also how to identify the use of epidemiology and compare between descriptive epidemiology and analytic epidemiology and finally we will identify essential characteristics of descriptive epidemiology and analytic epidemiology so what is epidemiology epidemiology is the study of the distribution and determinants of health related states or events in human population and the application of this study to the prevention and control of health problems so it is who gets the disease and why and epidemiologists study sick and well people to determine the crucial difference between those who get the disease and those who are spared some describe it as the study of epidemics so what is an epidemic so uh, you have heard of this word many times in this uh, few months so epidemic occurs when there are significantly more cases of the same disease than the past experience would have predicted. So, um, important issues epidemiology can address is actually all health-related states and event. It is not just about the disease. It includes disability, disease, hospitalization, health status, mortality, and also quality of life. So what is the unique skill of an epidemiologist? They measure the disease frequency in a population by studying the occurrence of disease or other health related events in specified population and practices epidemiology and controls the disease. So um, these are the components of measuring disease frequency. First is classifying and categorizing the disease. Second, deciding what constitutes a case of disease in a study. Third, finding a source for ascertaining the cases. Five, sorry, fourth, defining the population at risk of disease. Fifth, Defining the period of time of risk of disease. Sixth, obtaining permission to study people. Seventh, making measurement of disease frequency. And finally, relating cases to population and time at risk. So, epidemiologists may be involved in a range of activities as listed here. I would like to point out a few, which is identifying risk factors for disease, injury, and death, and describing the natural history of the disease. They also identify individuals and populations at greatest risk for disease, among others. So, when do we use epidemiology? We use it to study the cause or etiology of disease or conditions, disorders, disability, etc. Where we determine the primary agent responsible or ascertain causative factors, determine the characteristics of the agent or causative factors, define the mode of transmission, determine contributing factors, and finally, identify and determine geographic patterns. We also use epidemiology to determine, describe, and report on the natural cause of disease, disability, injury, and death. And we to aid the planning and development of health services and programs. And finally, to provide administrative and planning data. So, there are two broad types of epidemiology. The first one is descriptive epidemiology and the second one is analytic epidemiology. So, what is uh, descriptive epidemiology? 
it is when we examine the distribution of a disease in a population and observe the basic features of its distribution in terms of time, place, and person. The typical study design is Community Health Survey, approximate synonyms are cross-sectional study or a descriptive study, whereas analytic epidemiology tests a specific hypothesis about the relationship of a disease to a putative fact cause by conducting an epidemiologic study that relates the exposure of interest to the disease of interest. Typical study designs are cohort, or we call it as prospective, and also case control studies. So descriptive epidemiology is the antecedent to analytical epidemiology. It means that we have to conduct a descriptive epidemiology first before moving on to analytical epidemiology. This is because analytical epidemiology study requires information to know where to look, know what to control for, and also to develop viable hypotheses. There are three essential characteristics of a disease that we look for in a descriptive study, which are person, place, and also time. So, um, person is who is experiencing the health-related state or event. Place is where the occurrence of the state of event is highest or lowest. And time is when the state or event occurs most or least. So, let's look into person. So these are the characteristics of a person that we must look at. The first one is age, gender, ethnicity, genetic predisposition, concurrent disease, whether they have other types of disease at the same time, their diet, their exercise and smoking behavior, their risk-taking behavior, socioeconomic status or SES, education and also occupational status. When we're looking at the place, we must observe the presence or agents or vectors, the climate, the geology, the population density, the economic development in that place, the nutritional practices and also the medical practices. In terms of time, we must look at the calendar time, time since an event, physiological cycles, age, example time since birth, seasonality, and also temporal trends. Example, you have been asked to investigate an event in which 3,000 something people were exposed to something and more than 2,500 of them died. Your role as an epidemiologist is to ask questions about person, place, and time. So how do we ask questions? By surveys of the survivors because they, the person who have been infected by a disease have, had, had died. Surveys among necks of kin and also surveys of other related persons or those who stay nearby. So with the question you learn that person is, this is a, just an example, person is men and women and also children were all exposed and at risk. The majority of people who died were wealthy and young men between 18 to 15 years old compared to the survivors. The place is all those exposed were within one block of one another and the climate was cold and the time is mid-April. People died within hours of precip precipitating exposure. So this seems like um, an example of 
mold uh, infection or any respiratory disease infection. So previously, we have seen the essential characteristics for a descriptive epidemiology. So now, these are the three essential characteristics that are examined to study the cause for disease in an analytic epidemiology. The first one is the host or the population. Second one is agent or the causative factor. And finally, environment. So um, this slide shows the traditional triangle of epidemiology. So this triangle is based on the infectious disease model and useful in showing the interaction and interdependence of the agent, the host, and also the environment and time. The agent is the cause of the disease and the host is a human or animal that is susceptible to the disease. Example, healthcare workers, um, patients, unvaccinated individuals, and the environment includes those surroundings and conditions external um, to the uh, host and infectious agent. So, and time represents the incubation period, the life expectancy of the host or the pathogen, and the duration of the cause of the illness or condition. So, epidemics arise when host, agent, and environmental factors are not in balance. This is due to new agent, due to change in existing agent in terms of infectivity, pathogenicity and virulence, due to change in number of susceptible in the population and due to environmental changes that affect transmission of the agent or growth of the agent. So there is a close association between the triangle of epidemiology and the change of infection, which is shown in this slide. So disease transmission occurs when the pathogen leaves the reservoir, example, the food, water, feces, through a portal of exit, example, nose, mouth, rectum, urinary tract, blood, and other body fluids, and is spread by one of several modes of transmission, the pathogen or disease-causing agent enters the body through a portal of entry, example, mucous membrane, wounds, and infects the host if the host is susceptible. So once the pathogen leaves its reservoir, it follows its mode of transmission to a host, either by direct transmission, that is person-to-person -person contact, or by indirect transmission, example by airborne droplets or dust particles, vectors, formites, and food. The final link in the chain of infection is thus the susceptible individual or host. The epidemiologic triangle, as used in the discussion of the infectious disease, is basic and foundational to all epidemiological studies. However, infectious disease are no longer the leading cause of death in industrialized nations. In response, a more advanced model of a triangle of epidemiology has been approved. This new model includes all facets of a disease model. To make it more relevant uh, and useful with regard to today's disease conditions, disorders, defects, injuries, and deaths, it also reflects the causes of current illness and conditions, behavior, lifestyle factors, environmental causes, ecologic elements, physical factors and chronic diseases, 
must be taken into account. So this advanced model of epidemiologic triangle better reflects the behavior, lifestyle, and chronic disease issues found in modern times. To recap, in this lecture, we have learned on definition of epidemiology, use of epidemiology, the comparison between descriptive epidemiology and analytic epidemiology, essential characteristics of both types of epidemiology, the epidemiology triangle for infectious disease, chain of infection, and finally, the advanced model for epidemiology triangle. So, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask them or discuss them during our synchronous session. Our next lecture will be on the natural history of disease. With that, with that, thank you.